All right, here we go. This is problem number 21 from chapter 6 of the Halliday and Resnick textbook. Uh, we've got an initially stationary box of sand, uh, and it's going to be pulled across a floor by means of a cable in which the tension should not exceed 1,100 newtons. The coefficient of static friction between the box and the floor is 0 0.35. So our force of tension maximum is going to be 1,100 newtons. We're just probably just going to call this FT. We're just going to assume that the tension is 1,100 newtons and go from there. Um, we know that our coefficient of static friction is 0 0.35. A says find the angle between the cable and the horizontal, which will pull the greatest possible amount of sand. So we're trying to maximize the mass that we can pull. All right. So um, anytime you hear maximize, you should automatically be thinking calculus, right? So what we're going to want to do is we want to write an expression um, for the amount of mass that can be pulled with this tension as a function of the angle at which the rope is, or the cable is, you know, um, pulling the box, okay? And then we're going to differentiate it uh, to find the maximum, okay? So let's do this. Let's draw... I don't know why I erased that. This is what we want to find. We want to find an equation for the mass that we can pull with 1,100 newtons as a function of our angle. So let's draw it. Here's the box of sand. It's got a mass. We'll call that mass M. Okay? So gravity is going to pull it down with a force of mg. Um, we are going to pull with a force of tension of 1,100 newtons at some angle theta. Now notice that that angle could be negative, right? And we'd just be pulling downwards, all right? So the fact that I drew this up is, is sort of irrelevant here, right? Um, now, there's going to be a normal force. So I guess let's do this. So and then there's also going to be, you know, uh, what? Kinetic, uh, static friction, right? Force of friction, static. OK. so. Let's do this. Let's take a minute and um, split this drawing up into components. All right. The fact that I've got that force going at an angle is going to cause me problems. All right. So the idea is my tension force is going to be 1,100 newtons. I keep forgetting that extra one. 1,100 newtons at some angle. So there's going to be a force of tension in the x direction and a force of tension in the y direction. So in the x direction, that's just going to be 1,100 newtons times the cosine of whatever my angle is. And this one's going to be 1,100 times the sine of whatever my angle is. And notice, if my angle is negative, that'll make this guy negative also, right? If you take the sine of, say, negative uh, 30 degrees, it gives you negative a half. All right, so this will kind of keep track of my sines, even if I do have a negative angle, OK? So then what that means over here is this. So I've got my mass. There's going to be tension pulling in the x direction with a force of 1,100 times the cosine of theta. We're going to have gravity pulling down with a force of mg. And then we're going to have a normal force. We're going to have a vertical force from the tension, which is 1,100 times the sine of theta. Now keep in mind that this force could be down. I just sort of drew it here as a placeholder. But if this theta is negative, then this force will be downwards. Okay. So my normal force then is going to be. Uh, let me see. How do we want to do? It? It's going to be equal to whatever my weight is. That says mg minus whatever this tension force is. And notice that if the tension force is negative, we're actually subtracting a negative, which will make the normal force bigger, which makes sense. All right. And then finally, we're going to have our force of friction static, right? OK. So let's kind of clear up the board a little bit here. So that static friction force there, well, let's see. Force of static friction max, well, that's equal to my coefficient of static friction times my normal force. So let's see, I know my coefficient of static friction, and I just came up with an expression for my normal force. So this force of static friction is going to equal 0 0.35 times my normal force, which is mg minus 1,100 sine theta. Okay? 
So there's my drawing. All right. So so this thing is going to move when this force is equal to this guy, right? That's sort of the breaking point, right? So that this is going to become our equation. We're going to have um, that 1100 times the cosine of theta is going to equal 0.35 times. I'm going to distribute this 0.35 here. So you get 0.35 mg minus 0.35 times 1100 gives you uh, 385 sine of theta. Okay. Now, remember, my goal is I wanted to write an expression for mass in terms of theta, right? All right, this is 0 0.35, and this is a minus sign, and this is an equal sign. Okay, so if you do some algebra and rearrange this guy, you get this, that your mass is going to be equal to 1,100 times the cosine of theta plus 385 times the sine of theta, all divided by 0.35g. Okay? All right, so... That was the hard part of this problem. Well, maybe that's not true, but. OK, so now what we want to do is we want to maximize this thing, right? Our goal is that we want to maximize this mass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate my expression for mass with respect to the angle and then set it equal to 0, right? So um, I guess what we might want to do is, well, I guess it doesn't matter. Well, this is basically a constant, right? So it's going to be 1 over 0 0.35g times the derivative of all of this top stuff, right? So if you do that, you're going to get, let's see, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I'm going to get negative 1100 times the sine of theta plus the derivative of sine is just cosine. So I'm going to get plus 385 times the cosine of theta Right? And then I want to set that equal to 0. Okay? So um, this term ends up not mattering, right? Because I can just multiply both sides by 0.35g. Right? So doing a little bit of algebra gives us this. You find out that 385 cosine theta equals 1100 sine theta. Um, so if we divide both sides by cosine. So I'm going to divide both sides by cosine of theta. And the reason I did this, just to be transparent here, is now I've got sine over cosine. This is going to give me a tangent. Okay, So that was why I decided to do that that way. Okay. Um, so And then let's also divide by 1100. <laughs> why do I keep forgetting that one? All right, there we go. So the cosines cancel, the 1100s cancel. So on this side, I've got 385 over 1100. 385 over 1100 equals, over here, sine of theta over cosine of theta is tangent of theta. So now I can take inverse tangent and find out that my angle is 19.3 degrees. Okay. Now, technically, we don't know that that's the max, so we should check. Um, I also noticed that it's got to be a positive angle, right? Because well, the math showed me it was positive, I guess. Um, all right, so to ensure that it's a maximum, what you'd have to do is take another derivative, right? Take the second derivative and see if it's positive or negative. I'm not going to do that, but it does turn out that if you take a second derivative, so if you take the derivative of this mess again, um, so you get here's this. So you get, well, I'll put it, do it on a new slide. So if you take the second derivative, you end up getting negative 1100 cosine of theta minus 385 sine of theta all over 0.35g. And then if you plug in 19.3 degrees, you get a number that's less than 0, um, which means that, uh, that you've got a max, right? Because your slope is decreasing, right? Right? So that means it must be a max. OK? So there we go. That is a tough problem.